Joining us on the podcast once again today is a big supporter of our work here at Crack Rackets, but more importantly, the co-founder and CEO of our friends at Swing Vision, it's CEO Swapnil Sahai. Swapnil, welcome to the podcast. I'll start out by saying thank you for your support of what we do here at Crack Rackets. How are you doing today? Hey, Alex. Thanks for having me. Doing, doing really well. Oh, it is my pleasure to have you. And I have to say, I've enjoyed seeing you on the podcast rounds. You've gone on a couple of different shows and you've gone and you were obviously interviewed on TC Live as well. And that helps me from a preparation standpoint. So I certainly appreciate that. Does it ever get overwhelming? Are you just like, all right, maybe enough is enough? <laughs> no, it's all good. It's been it's been really fun just like talking to people, doing interviews with like such different People with like, you know, some people who are avid users, some people who've never heard about it before. So it's always a different conversation and there's always some new nuggets that, that come out of it. So it's cool. Yeah. It's been fun. Well- I'm going to hope to not overlap today. I mean, there's some fundamentals, obviously, we have to hit. And, you know, one of the places I want to start, and I know you've talked about this before, but the origins of Swing Vision and, you know, looking through your background, I know you attended Cal Berkeley, you know, honors in, I believe, uh, computer science and uh, in mathematics, uh, applied mathematics, statistics and economics, excuse me, which, again... Not too bad, my friend. A little humble brag on your behalf. I'll do it for you. Um, Obviously, you have a background in engineering, a background in something like inventing an app such as Swing Vision, but the tennis component. Where does that inspiration come in? What drew you back to tennis? Yeah. Well, I've played tennis my whole life. It was the first sport that I learned. I grew up playing it with my dad and my brother. We used to play like on the weekends and then ended up playing like in high school and all that and still continued playing it, went out to Berkeley. And then even when I went to grad school out in New York, as difficult as it was to play out there, I did play on like the clay courts in Brooklyn and all that. So um, it's always been a big part of my life. And then it's funny you mentioned the engineering part because like I actually didn't really do any formal like studies in computer science. I was more on like the math side, which is like more theoretical. Uh, but it was because of the idea of swing vision that actually I got into engineering. It's pretty funny. Like I, I had the idea, like when the first Apple watch came out, I wanted to make like a really simple app just to like keep scores on my wrist and like track my breakpoint conversions and stuff like that. And I was like, I have no idea how to make it. So I just like taught myself how to code actually. So that was actually like how I went down the journey almost together with the initial version of swing and like the engineering side. So I kind of taught myself how to code. That was like the first app I ever made. Um, We like launched it on the app store and I I kind of worked on it as a side project, but you know, the idea for swing vision itself didn't come until a little bit later when I was at Tesla working on the um, autopilot team. So there I was working on computer vision. So like that means tracking stuff using the cameras. And that's where I started to realize like, the data I really cared about in my game was not just like the scoring information, but I wanted to know like, you know, where am I hitting on the court? Where's the ball landing? Like really similar to what Hawkeye had. And you basically need a camera to do that. You can't just do that with a watch. And so that was where the idea for like swing vision came out, where it was like, let's actually use the cameras and try to automate everything as well. So I don't even need to like keep score on my wrist or anything. It's just all fully automated. Um, and so that, that was kind of, yeah, it was, it was a long journey in some ways over time. It was initially like a side project and then eventually became a full-time job. Um, oh, it's but, fascinating yeah. to me as someone who also had a passion for tennis and figured out how do I use my skill set. And unfortunately, yeah. you know, I'm not going to say I was bad at math. I actually think I'm pretty solid. Uh, Maybe, you know, I'm not giving lectures at Cal Berkeley on your level, but I think I can hold my own in a mathematics conversation. That's, you know, I I can still throw out a grabs proof here and there. That said, uh, when you are talking about the math and and mathematics and its relation to tennis, certainly like any sport in the modern day, there has been some sort of statistical revolution in the sport, most notably for those in the public. You turn to a place like Tennis Abstract, where, of course, you can see the basics. First serve percentage, first serve win percentage, second serve win percentage, ace percentage, you know, hold percentage, et cetera. Those sorts of statistics exist, but not very publicly and not to the depth that perhaps they exist in other sports, right? There's no wins above replacement level. I can't tell you to what extent... Roger Federer's forehand is better than, say, Yuri Veshley's forehand. Those sorts of relationships I don't yeah. think publicly exist. 
you talk about having a tennis background. I assume like any tennis player, you also became a fan of some of the players uh, playing professionally. Sure. Is yeah. that relationship something you think about? And is that a, a, a gap you are trying to bridge through swing vision? Yeah, definitely. I mean, to be fair, the, the original inspiration was like, I can see Roger's stats. Like, why can't I see my stats? So yeah, sure. it was a little bit selfish initially. Um, but yeah, it was, it's actually funny to bring that up because like in one of the first conversations I had with James Blake, uh, who was basically our first investor uh, like ever, um, he actually right away was like, oh, like I would have used this when I was a pro because I, you know, aside of from like the big tournaments, like the masters and the, the grand slams, like they don't have any data. And if you think about it, like they're spending most of their time on the practice court and basically like even James had like no information on his practice court, which is practice matches, like nothing. Um, and so that blew my mind. Cause I, I, I just assumed they had it cause they're pros. Like why wouldn't they, but it turns out they don't. And so it's cool that it seems like we can actually kind of almost bridge the gap as you're saying, and make this not just for amateurs, but even professional players uh, using it. And that's really exciting to me. And then, you know, someday, hopefully we can get it incorporated into those big events as well, um, like the Grand Slams or the Masters 1000s. And then it'd be nice because you'd have like this data open and available on the platform for everybody. Um, and it's just, it's a little bit strange that it's so closed. Cause like, if you think about it, if I watch, like, if I really wanted, I could watch like every pro match and just like kind of manually write down like all this data if I wanted, like I could write down where's the ball landing and all this stuff. And like, I could like go open source and put it, but no one's going to do that work. Right. So, but it's like, <laughs> if we're able to capture all that with swing vision, like we should just make it public. Like, why does it have to be this like closed thing where like no one can access it? I think it doesn't really make sense to me. So I, I feel like the more data is more transparent, it's better. So um that'll be awesome and then people can do their own analysis and like you're trying to do you know compare like federativeously and all that kind of stuff like this is so much you could do uh it gets it gets quite interesting as as like more people have access to the data you, you see how people use it in interesting ways and like opens up new insights for like everybody in the sport so i think it's just you know it's good for everybody to have access and it's like equalizes the playing field and all that um mm -hmm. so yeah no we are six minutes 50 minutes uh 50 seconds into this conversation I'm a fan. I'm all in. Like I see the excitement in your eyes and I'm trying to reflect that to our listeners and the endless possibilities with Swing Vision. I do think that's, if I may say, why we at Cracked Rackets were so excited to get in contact with you and start working together with uh, your team and your vision because, for lack of no pun intended, uh, because you talk about the possibilities that come with incorporating yeah. that data into improving people's tennis and to make that data publicly available. Now, of course, people can learn how to sign up for the Swing Vision app. And of course, there are functionality features that require full-time employees that require salaries. So of course, yeah. you do. Uh, yeah, you have to sign up for the Swing Vision app to get all of the features that uh, are included with it. But you talk about making that a da data available. And you, you said this in your answer that, you know, Roger Federer knows his stats. Why can't I know my stats? Well, I think yeah. at any level, the majority of statistics are taken via analog, right? It's, I have a coach who's watching the match and said that's one missed yeah. forehand or that's a serve out wide. And if you're lucky, they'll be extraordinarily specific. You yeah. guys have figured out how to code it through camera vision. I believe that's the term you yeah. use there. Talk to yeah. me about that process. Now we don't have, you know, you don't have to tell me, was it C++? Was it Python? We don't have to get into that. Um, <laughs> but talk to me about that, you know, the, the importance of that feature. Yeah. I mean, that's like the crux of like everything, like, yeah. uh, you know, for swing vision. So we, the way it works is you put your phone up behind you, like on a tripod, we have a mount that we sell as well, that you can stick it on top of the fence. And then, uh, the camera basically is recording your match, uh, from behind the baseline. So the angle looks exactly like what you see on TV and what you're used to seeing. Um, and from that angle alone, we're able to track the ball trajectory in 3d. So we can tell like, where you're hitting the ball from, where is it landing on the court? Like how high is it when it goes over the net, the entire trajectory really. And then also like your player movements, how much are you running in the point and all that stuff. So uh, it's pretty sophisticated what we're doing. Uh, I think the biggest innovation that we've made, which no one has been able to do yet in basically any sport is that we're being able to do this with one camera. So, you know, people have done this before and with multiple cameras, you've, you've had, you know, obviously Hawkeye at the highest level where it's like 10 cameras around the court and they have like a massive computer, like underneath the stadium that's like processing everything. And it's like super intense. Um, and so we've somehow brought that all into your iPhone. Um, and that's like a patented thing that we, we, we found a like really novel way to do it. Um, and it basically comes down to just like getting a lot of data. So that was kind of the same approach that 
I had it when I was working at Tesla. And it's just like get lots and lots of examples. It gets lots of examples of like forehands and backhands from all different kinds of players, all different kinds of lighting conditions, different court surfaces, time of day, all that stuff. And then similarly for the ball trajectory, just like observe like thousands and thousands of trajectories, all different shapes and you know placements around the court. And as we got more and more data, you know, now we have like. I think it was like almost a hundred over hundred million shots or something recorded. I mean, it's just crazy that I think we have more data, more footage about tennis than like any other company, <laughs> like in the world, like it's just crazy. And so because of that, like we've been able to get these algorithms to work like so much better and it's not perfect. It's not as accurate as Hawkeye, obviously, because it's just a single camera. There's some physical limits to how accurate you can get, but it is more accurate now than um, the players on the court. And like, that's, that's kind of what most people need, you know? So it's, it's really cool. And um and that's that's really been a big part of it. It's just like getting as much data as possible. And now we're in the phase where we're just trying to find like the hard cases where like sometimes the the AI messes up. And so again, that's really helpful because there there's really tricky cases that don't happen that often. But because we have so much data, like we can find a lot of those examples and like basically help teach the AI to do a better job uh, in those cases. So I think like we're gonna rapidly get to a point where like this will be really really robust. Um, and it will be kind of the best solution, at least in terms of something that's like portable and affordable, uh, for tracking your tennis. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Are, have you named the AI? Like, are we going to call it Leoni, the court calling feature <laughs> or after just some sort of la- chair umpire? That's so funny. Yeah. I need to, I need to reach out to Mohammed and, uh, get, get a partnership <laughs> going. Uh, we definitely need to get his, you know, eventually we're going to automate the scoring too in real time. So like the phone will actually call out the score and it'd be so cool to have his voice. So I need to hit him up and uh, work on a partnership. <laughs> yeah, or just get Rob Koenig or Mike Cation to give you 15 love. 15 all. <laughs> or just all the different uh, various things. We talk about the applications for Swing Vision, and I want to get back to what they can do for individuals in their tennis game and improving. But I want to talk about some big picture things, some things I know you guys are hoping to accomplish at Swing Vision. Yeah. And as you referred to, that's the automated line calling available within yeah. your app. Now, you talk about the accuracy issues. And And, you know, again, I know you guys are working to address them every day, as you referred to, to make your product uh, continue to make it better and better. We do a lot of work with uh, college tennis at Crack Rackets, and certainly college tennis brings us the most prominent examples of perhaps uh, disagreeable line calls. And so I'm curious when you talk about the application for Swing Vision, because right now you can download it on your phone, set up your iPhone, it'll capture Mm -hmm. your hitting session, it can break it down for you via different parts. But in terms of the automated line calling feature, is that going to be through an iPhone camera? Is that going to be through a different set of cameras? How do we bring something like yeah. Swing Vision to the college level, to the junior level, all of these different yeah, places? Yeah. No, I mean, that's still the same approach as we have in the app today. It's just going to be through an iPhone. The good thing is okay. the iPhones are getting cheaper and cheaper every year. So as of right now, like the cheapest device that can do real-time line calling is is like around 200 bucks on amazon it's the iphone se second gen um so you know you can imagine in a few years it's going to be like 100 bucks to get that device so i mean this is going to become so affordable it's going to just be like a no-brainer for anybody to use it and then i think at the college level what we we have over 30 division one programs uh paying and using for swing vision right now so um i think what we're seeing at that level is that they're using ipads just because all the data and the video on a big screen if you're the coach um and so typically the teams will will purchase like six ipads uh you know one for each court and then set that up and so that's how we see it working at the college level um the accuracy is actually like basically the same whether you use an ipad or an iphone just kind of up to personal preference on what size device you want and then I, you know i imagine the junior events and all that's probably gonna end up being more like iphones because that's where like cost is more consideration you don't have like a big budget you know to just get whatever you want so sure. um so yeah but i mean we're trying to just make it super accessible and like kind of transferable across multiple devices. So like if you have the big budget, you go ahead and get, get to like all the bells and whistles and the latest devices, but you don't need it. Um, and it's just, this technology is just getting like cheaper and cheaper every year. So I think that's really exciting too. Um, and then, I mean, yeah, basically with just that one camera, we can call the lines like more accurately than the players now in most situations. There's some situations where we still get it wrong and that's the main reason why it's not used in college tennis yet. Um, so we are working with them to, to kind of get that accuracy approved and validated uh, independently, not just like our validation. So that's going to be a little bit of a process, but there's this very strong interest, as you could imagine, uh, you know, from the college programs to implement this. I think it just makes the experience strictly better for everybody, players, fans, coaches, teams, right? So 
uh, that's that's the direction we're heading. I, I feel confident we're going to solve it, but it's just a matter of kind of going through their formal approval process. Sure. Um, I could I could see there being a situation where like in college, maybe we'll want like one device on each side, like behind each baseline, just for like optimal accuracy and things like that. Um, but other than that, uh, it's it's still going to be a pretty simple setup of just like your smartphone or your your tablet. And then I mean, we're iOS only right now, but you know, uh, going into the next year, we'll be going to Android. So then we'll have even more devices that could be used and even, you know, lower cost devices. So that's also going to be really exciting. Yeah. Is it compatible only with Apple right now? That may be a nerdy question. I apologize. It's not so much about compatibility. It's, um, it's actually the, the hardware. So we, okay. we like did a bunch of tests and like, I mean, I should mention like the algorithms we are running are like super advanced. Like, yeah. I, you know, I worked at Tesla, like I know what an advanced algorithm is. This is like, I would say it's one of the most advanced algorithms that's running on like any app, like, on any mobile app honestly it's just like so much computation because we have to like process the video at like 60 frames per second which is like really high frequency um because the ball moves so fast so like that is a that is like a lot of computation and so we tested this out on some android devices they're basically like as of last year there wasn't like any android device in existence that could even keep up with that 60 frames per second so now we are seeing some so like the samsung uh s22 that just came out that one seems like it's going to kind of meet the bar. And then the Pixel 6 that came out last year also. So it's going to be like the really, really high-end Android phones that will be supported initially. And then even on the iPhone side, you do need like an iPhone SE or 11 or newer. So if you have like an iPhone 10, actually, like you can't do any of the real-time stuff. So we really are kind of at the bleeding edge of sure. what's possible on a smartphone. That's that's kind of the reason why Apple has like done so much promotion for us, right? So um, it, it, it's like a double-edged sword. It's, it's really cool, but at the same time, you you, you know, you make it less accessible to people who have older phones. But, you know, the thinking is over time, people do upgrade their phones eventually. And, um, you know, eventually, eventually everyone should be able to use this, whether it's now or like five years from now, yeah. um, depending on your upgrade cycles. And it's been actually really cool to see so many people, like literally almost every day, we have people switch from Android to iPhone uh, mm -hmm. just to use Swing Vision, which is like insane. Uh, I never thought that would happen. So people are really, really want to get their hands on it. I think the demand's like super high. So that's really cool to see. Um, no. But obviously we're going to do our best to make it more accessible for everybody. So you don't, now everybody has to like switch what they're doing and do such a big life change uh, to just do Swing Vision. Yeah, no, look, Samsung S22 sponsors of the Crack Rackets podcast. Just kidding. <laughs> they are not. Um, but yeah, it's that's excellent to hear. And, you know, again, I have told this to you before the podcast started, but for our listeners I have, and who may have heard me say this on multiple live ads we've done uh, discussing Swing Vision, I had the mm -hmm. chance to use uh, your app uh, down in Miami. I played club tennis. Did you play club tennis at Cal? Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. the club team was really good. If, if, cause you were there, what, like Oh nine ish, 10, 11 range. Yeah, I was there, um, 2009 to 2013. So actually, no, sorry. I didn't play club. Yeah, you're right. The club team was like super good. They played like national, right? No, no, I was, uh, I was just like intramural. The club yeah. was way too good. Yeah. I couldn't make gotcha. that. No, no it's I, my <laughs> freshman year. Cal won it. And then uh, beat them my senior uh, year. So shout out to me. Uh, see how I managed to work that into every podcast. But um, no, the the reason I bring that up is again, I went. On, I was on a club tennis reunion trip with some buddies from college, and our my friend said, "Hey, I have this app called the Swing Vision app, and I'm going to set up my phone on the background to record it." And we were just like, "Oh, it's great to have any recording. Like, yeah, do it, of course." And then afterwards, he goes, "Yeah, do you want to see what it is? Like, do you want to see the forehands you hit?" I was like, "Well, what do you mean?" And he brings up the Swing Vision app and he goes, you know, he goes to the time and he goes, four hands from this clip. And it's just me hitting four hands. And I look at him and I say, Kyle, what is this? And he goes, it's the Swing Vision app, like I've been telling you. And so, again, when you talk about processing in real time, talk to me about that feature. I think people, many, you know, recording cameras, uh, recording your tennis matches, excuse me, is not a novel concept. But to get back to something I referred to earlier, to not have to go through it by analog. You know, what yeah. does that mean? What is available for these players who download the Swing Vision app? Yeah, so that's right. That's one of the biggest benefits is, you know, because we process everything in real time, we, we're, we're tracking your shots. We know like when the rally is starting, when the rally is ending. And so that just makes it like really efficient to review your footage. So as soon as you're done recording, you have like all of your stats available, first of all. So you can see like your ball placements, how deep you're hitting, like for any particular stroke type. We have like an insane amount of like filters and custom customization there. But then when you're playing your video, that's where like the true power comes in, as you mentioned. So 
we had these incredible filters on the video itself. So you could filter by like rallies if you wanted. Um, so you could say like, show me every rally above like five shots or whatever. And like who won based on who won the point and all that. But then at the same time with like technique analysis, it's so cool. Cause yeah, you can say like literally show me every cross court forehand that I hit into the net. Like you can get super detailed with this. You just tap in a few buttons and then immediately it's all cut for you. And then you can just watch just those uh, shots or just those points and it'll just immediately clip to the next one, to the next one and removes all the dead time. Um, and it's just like, I think it's the fastest way to like review and improve your game. It's now amazing. Because- I, I apologize. For, it's, I, I was like, so show me my forehand misses, Kyle. And he goes, okay. And he goes, forehand misses. <laughs> and it's literally, and I mean, you know, again, I was like, it's the same error every time. I'm like looking at myself. I'm like, you felt yourself doing that. And now you see it doing it. But it is, to your point, processing in real time. And, yeah. you know, again, it's not angle dependent, right? And this sort of gets back to the live calling feature as well. It's just as simple as you have the phone, you, you download the app, you set it up on the back fence, and it can do all of these different things. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as long as it's just like somewhere behind the baseline, it's going to work. You know, there's there's some places that are better than others. So the optimal place is like right in the middle on top of the fence if you can, but you can also put it on like a tripod, like five foot off the ground. And that's also okay. Uh, it'll still work. It'll still work quite well um, from that angle too, you know? So, and especially if you, if you're someone who doesn't care as much about the data, you just want to have the footage and then being able to do all these video filters, like you don't need to worry about the optimal accuracy. So it's kind of like something for everybody depending on what you care about. Right. Um, and it's just, that's been why it's adopt, been adopted so quickly. It's just because it's so easy to set up and use, uh, you know, compared to anything else. Mm-hmm. And so you talk about the relationships with college schools and colleges across the country. I believe the number you said was 30 are using it already. And, you know, again, if I'm a coach and I know some coaches do listen to this podcast, I'm getting this for my school immediately because you set this up via cameras during practice sessions. You just have everything you're looking for. You don't need yeah. your volunteer assistant or whatever to go through the footage. You've just got it all. The computer has done yeah. it for you. That's, again... It, I, it's a testament to your team and what you guys have been able to build. You know, that said, you talk about the data uh, available. Uh, certainly yeah. it is for, are, I guess, for fans out there who might be wondering, let's say enough places adopt Swing Vision and all these schools are using it and all you have yeah. all of these statistics. Is there eventually a world where we have a stats leaderboard where we can go in the Swing Vision app and say, hey, here are the college stats. Here's what the best players are doing. Here's what X, Y mm-hmm. look like as well. What are you guys, you know, what is the vision, if you don't mind me asking, over the next few seasons? Yeah, for sure. I think leaderboards would be really cool. Um, we are planning to add leaderboards this summer that are more just kind of like individual focus. So it's just kind of everybody in the app can compete, but you will be able to filter the leaderboard based on like your level of like NTRP or UTR. So you'll be able to do that. Um, but yeah, I think college specific leaderboards is really cool. I know you guys do a lot of those, those rankings yourselves, right? So that would be pretty cool to get into that space. Um, as we get, you know, we'd probably need more colleges to adopt it before that gets interesting. I think it's still a small number right now, but yeah, for sure. Like as we get a critical mass of colleges, like we could start having leaderboards for various like shot types or even just like various stats, whatever people care about, basically we could make it. Um, so, you know, if the people want it, we'll, we'll deliver it. Um, that's basically our philosophy. So yeah, I think, uh, that seems really cool to be able to compare like college athletes. And then even like as an amateur player, like see where yes. you stand relative to the college athletes. Right. And then we're also, um, starting to get more and more pros using it too. So I can't say any names right now, but we have some <laughs> pretty top players actually using it now, um, testing it out. And they're like really loving using swing vision for their practice matches and things like that when they're training. So I could see them being on the leaderboards too, which would be so fun to see some like big names there, with like the little green check mark because it's swing vision. Um, and so that would be really cool. Uh, so yeah, I think there's a big opportunity for leaderboards. And just like in general, like competition in the app. And um, it's going to, again, be really unique because Swing Vision is the only platform that has like everybody from all the different levels of the sport. And so it's going to be cool to be able to compare everybody. And then, I mean, as you go into like technique analysis and stroke analysis, I'm hoping we can kind of find ways to, you know, let's say you, you had that match where your forehand was off or something, right? Like you could see like your forehand side by side with like a professional player who's using the app as well, or just any anybody like a college player, right? And you can just kind of compare it. And we would, because of swing vision AI, we could time it perfectly. So it's like, it's going to have the exact same like swing motion, but you can just see like what they were doing correct, what you were, you know, maybe doing incorrectly. Um, so I think all of that's just going to help improve, you know, making the app more fun, but also more useful uh, to improve your game. So it's really exciting. 
and I know these are things you've discussed, but you know, more live streaming. I know that's things you guys are discussing doing in the Swing Vision app, and I'd love to hear, you know, uh, what sorts of levels, what sorts of things people would be able to see. But you know, again, yeah. I'm, and I'm sure these are things you guys discuss as well. There's a world where coaches come into the app and say, "Hey, here, you know, I have seen, you know, you show them this error." I'm sure the AI can say, oh, "We recognize this error," and you have the coaches record, "Hey, this is how you correct this error. This is how you do X, Y, Z." Yeah. You get to, and again, no one listens to this podcast. You can tell me some names. What pros are using this? Come on. You can tell me all the names, Swap Nil. Um, but those sorts of things where you say, hey, this is how they hit five, four hands in a row, right? Are those the sorts of conversations you guys are having? Yeah. Um, so on the live streaming side, we've been seeing obviously a lot of demand from the college level to stream matches, right? And like kind of build out their audience and reach more people. So I think that's really exciting. And I think um, we're going to come in at like the best price point possible just because it's the cheapest hardware setup. Um, and then we're also seeing a lot of uh, league and like amateur players uh, asking for live streaming. And then parents too. I mean, they want to be able to stream like their kids' matches so they can watch it or their friends and family could watch it. Like, you know, everybody around the the country can kind of gather around and like watch remotely. So I feel like that's a really cool experience that's going to become normal. Um, and that's going to take some time to get there because, uh, you know, we still need battery technology to improve a little bit with the, with the phones and everything. Um, you know, streaming does add another layer into the mm-hmm. equation of computation and everything. So it's a little bit complex, but um, I do think like, you know, five years time, like everyone will be streaming their matches. And I think swing vision will basically be like a Twitch for, for tennis. So Anybody can stream, anybody can like attract sponsors, anybody can become like an influencer with like lots of followers if they want to, if that's what they want to do. Um, I think there'll be people who like whose full-time job is just like streaming matches on like Swing Vision and like making money off of it. So I think that's going to be a pretty exciting future where it's just like so much video and content and it's all live. Uh, and I think we're going to improve the way that you watch tennis too, because we'll make it more interactable. Like it's not just a static stream. You can go back in time if you want to, you can, you know, those filters that you were using, imagine you could use those in real time. So like in real time during the stream, I could go back and see like, okay, the first set just finished. We're kind of like waiting for them at the change of ends. I can go and like create a little highlight clip and just see like how this player did that first set, like watch those matches again. And instead of being at the discretion of like, you know, the broadcaster, I can just like make my own highlights in real time. So I think like, all that's going to be really cool, like custom replays, all that stuff. Um, and just like so much more control over the viewing experience. I think it's going to be really exciting there. Um, so yeah, I think live streaming is like a big, big opportunity. And um, it's still like so early for that. I think the technology is like not even ready for it yet, I think. But it's it's going to get there eventually. And, you know, with 5G and everything, like high speed internet's like so much more accessible now. Um, and it's only going to get faster, right? So. Yeah. I think it's uh, everyone's going to have it for sure. Yeah. No, I mean, I think I have vertigo because I've just been shaking my head up and down in a yes <laughs> formation for the past 30 minutes. Everything you guys are doing is working. And again, I, I don't say that, you know, just to butter you up sincerely, having had, you know, use the app myself. I know the sort of data that becomes available to you and how convenient that is for any player who you don't have time yeah. to go back and watch yourself play for an hour, check off your forehand errors, mm-hmm. all these different things. Maybe you do when you're 12 or 13 <laughs> and, you know, to that credit yeah. to you, but when you're 26 or 38 or 45 and you're yeah, like, hey, yeah, let me yeah. just do this because I want to get better to have that at the palm of your hands. It it means the world, I, I think, to people. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I think you guys have had the reception you have. And so many people are so excited about what you are doing. Now, I have to ask before I let you go, you were a tennis fan growing up. You walk into the room, James Blake, Andy Roddick. Who's the more intimidating figure? And just tell me what those conversations are like. Because I do imagine, I mean, again, sorry for swearing, this shit works. Like, it just really works. And so when these when these players see it, uh, given the lack of data available to them, I imagine they had to have gotten excited. Well, I mean, what's crazy is for both Andy and James, I met them when I was still at Tesla and I just had the idea for Swing Vision. We hadn't even built it yet. So it was it was a pretty hard sell in that respect. I was just selling like words on a, on a paper, <laughs> basically. Um, but James, so yeah, I met them kind of separately. First time I met James, I met him at like a, a country club in San Diego near his house. Um, Did you call him Mr. Connection. Blake or James at the time? No, I, I called him James. Um, <laughs> I, like I wasn't, I wasn't too intimidated to do that. So yeah, we were, cause it was a professional meeting. So I was like, we can, we can do first names. That's all good. 
Um, so, so yeah, so we did that. Um, and he was so chill. Like it was like, I didn't even know I was talking to a celebrity. Like he's so down to earth and you have like no clue. Like if you didn't know him from tennis, like you would never guess. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was just like, I didn't feel that nervous talking to him. Like he made me feel like super comfortable. He was like really, really calm, um, and really excited by, by the vision and like what we wanted to do. So that was like the very first meeting. And then, so, yeah, so he, he invested shortly after that. Then we wanted to get like some more players on board. So then he told me to come out to Texas for an EXO match that he was doing with James, uh, with Andy and um, Jim Creer and John McEnroe. So for that one, I went, I remember going to the stadium and uh, James like met me outside and he's like, he's like, Hey, okay, I'll bring you inside. So we went into like the locker room. So he was there pretty early. Um, and so I was just like chilling with him in the locker room. We were just chatting about like the latest updates and stuff like that. And then finally, like these other guys arrived and then that was like pretty crazy to see them in person. Um, like Andy and Jim and John, like they're such big legends too. Right. And I mean, they've achieved so much for the sport. So that was pretty crazy to see them. Um, and James kind of, you know, made the intro to, to each of them for me and like tried to hype me up a bit. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely intimidating, <laughs> especially just cause it's like all three of them at once. Um, so, but having James there helped, I think if it was just me without James, that would have been like really nervous. Yeah, um, sure. So. <laughs> it's a lot. No, they're big. Pro I'm sure John McEnroe is John McEnroe wherever he is. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's how I would have described it. Uh, yeah. he was like exactly how I, how I imagined him to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, great. Yeah, it's funny. He 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 wasn't unfortunately that interested in, in what I what I would pitch him about. Um, but Jim was actually like super nice and like really inquisitive, like asking lots of questions about like where this could go and like it was cool to see like that side of him. Um, and then Andy was like that too, like asking really good questions. I could tell Andy like had invested in other companies before. Like he was asking like all the right questions. Very like just really smart with everything. And um, so was there yeah, a Shark it was, Tank it was interview? They were running you through like the, they were running you through the list of Shark Tank questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in some extent, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> sure. that's funny. There were there were definitely some of those questions. I mean, it was it was pretty casual. It was funny. Like we were just like sitting down, like. Mm -hmm next to each other like andy was going through like a bunch of signatures i guess you do like a bunch of autographs or something i don't know these guys are so busy they were just like yeah, sure. but then, well, while he was doing that he was still talking to me and like jim was also kind of jumping in asking questions so it was a very kind of casual sort of conversation it wasn't really like a formal pitch i didn't feel like i was presenting to them it was just like three of us talking but obviously they were evaluating me so you know the pressure was on but it was cool though it was it was nice um you know and uh, Andy was the one who ended up investing eventually. Um, but yeah, it was, it was super cool and yeah. amazing. Experience. And so with and that I, I wanted to, I wanted to get a selfie or something with them, but I was like, <laughs> I got to close the deal. That's the number one party. Like yeah. not going to worry about that. Right now. Yeah, but like, part of me was like, Oh man, this is like, so hey, cool. Guys, like, I know this is great. Do you want to hit like, <laughs> guys down? like just like 10 minutes, 15. Um, no, I, I, again, it, it's super cool to see. And my last question would be, talk to me about the team, where you guys are at, what you guys are doing, because I know you guys continue to grow. Yeah. I mean, um, we're team still really small. We're, we're just like 12 people right now. We, we barely hired like three more people, uh, this, this year itself so far. So, um, we've been really lean, really tiny. We haven't, you know, compared to, I think, other startups, even that have reached the kind of revenue levels that we're at, we've raised very little money. We've done a really good job, I think, of just being like super efficient with our capital, not like hiring too many people. Um, we are going to probably be raising more money this year. Then at that point, we'll be like really expanding the team. Um, we've, we've had some cool hires recently, though. Um, we actually hired, uh, you know, Rally Opelka, right? So his his uh his his dad's actually now joined us full time. Um, so he's based out of Florida, and so he's been leading a lot of our conversations with with a bunch of clubs out there. We're partnering with like a lot of clubs down on the ground in Florida, and he's also been working with a lot of the pro players. So he's kind of leading that charge. George George is his name, um, and he actually comes from um, like a tech background as well more on the business development side, been working for various tech companies for like a couple of decades. So really sharp guy. Um, it's been really fun working with him and he just knows everybody. So yeah. it's just like every conversation is so fast and easy for him to make. Um, so that's cool. So uh, it's been, it's been, it's been a joy having him on the team. And then we have, um, a few division one, uh, tennis players as well. So one from Cal actually, and then one from Sacramento, um, she's, she's in Russia now, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's been really cool to see just, 
the, the diverse set of people that we have on the team. Everybody loves tennis, of course, um, but everybody's bringing something new to the table and um, almost all of them are much better than me at tennis. So that's also. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Right. yeah. Ever since you're just like, come on, that's good. You got, again, you're like, I built this company for two reasons to create my statistics and to have tennis hitting partners and you've accomplished both goals. <laughs> and so I think, you know, everything out uh, here from out is gravy, but again, it, yeah. it's been so cool uh, to get the chance to use the swing vision app and to finally see technology be, and technological developments incorporated into tennis far overdue, right? It's the old boys club for a reason. Like, you yeah. know, Wimbledon for all of its traditions is actually a pretty good facsimile of where tennis stands from an analytics <laughs> standpoint. And so to finally have something available to the public, right? Like I'm yeah. sure in the past five to seven years, there have been private companies that provide data to players, but to have right, something right. publicly available for a player like me or to mm-hmm. anyone listening to this podcast, that in my opinion is the crux of make, what makes so, Swing Vision so uh, exceptional. And so again, uh, if you don't mind me saying, immensely appreciative of what you guys are doing because I do think you guys are on the forefront of something really cool. And just for all of our listeners, I know they can find uh, more in the description to the link to this podcast, but how can they sign up with Swing Vision? What should they be doing to get started today? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, I mean, first of all, thanks for, for all the kind of words. We're, we're happy to hear that that you like what we're doing. Um, we're going to keep kind of pushing the edge of what's possible and hopefully the leader for innovation in any sport, right? And I hope you know, people will see tennis as being the most innovative sport. So I think we're, we're proud to be part of that. Um, yeah, so, you know, the app's actually free to download. You don't need to do anything. You can create a free account. You can use the app for free completely. Um, and in the free plan, you get two hours of recording. So it gives you uh, two hours of recording a month, actually. So you can kind of try it out, test it out. Um, but for the best experience, you're going to want to subscribe to the pro subscription. That gives you uh, like 30 hours of recording a month. You get lifetime cloud storage. So like you can play on Swing Vision for 30 years and like all your matches will be there and you can go back and watch any of them. So it's amazing. It's just like such a good deal because like it's literally unlimited storage, cloud storage. Um, and then we've, we have a, per, a special code with Crack Brackets, which will actually give your listeners access to that subscription and our phone mount, our optimal phone mount that, that like mounts on top of the fence in like five seconds. It's so fast to set up. Um, and you get $100 off that if you use the Crack Rackets code. So definitely check out the code in the description, um, and you'll be able to get that. It's an amazing deal, and uh, you'll have a really good experience if you use that. So please try it out. Shoot me an email. Um, swap me at swing.tennis. Let me know how, how you think, how you like it, and um, I'll, I'll always respond. So <laughs> let me know if you have any feature requests or anything like that too. Uh, we're, we're always trying to make the app better. I love it. My final request would be, can we get the swap no cam on the front page? Like we just get your latest hitting sessions every time as well. And so you can be the litmus test that we all compare ourselves to. Oh God. No, that's too embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want, you can find me in the app and search for me, but it's uh some, some of the matches aren't pretty. So I was going to say, are you under <laughs> a burner? You're like, I can't take that sort of heat. I, it's a fake name. <laughs> yeah i should just hire, i should just find some like college player and like have him change his name to my name yeah. on the app and they'll be like oh yeah that's me yeah yeah that's yeah. that's how i play so. that's good who's ever at cal nowadays you're just like yeah that's actually <laughs> me um no that's perfect well again swap nil immensely appreciative for your, your support swing vision support of what we're doing here at crack rackets obviously we are happy to reciprocate and uh hopefully we'll have the chance to chat with you again soon yeah for sure thanks for having me alex super fun